I know everybody I else was there. Yeah, we was there. Yeah. We mm. was the last yeah. crew to come in. Right, right, because I, I remember seeing Minister Carter directing us in. We would like to welcome you to the journey through our lens of Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. We sat down with members of our congregation to talk about their experiences that they went through in those storms. In this final episode, we are talking to Ralph Woods Sr. and Brenda Woods. My name is Deacon Ralph Woods Sr. And I'm Brenda Woods. That Saturday night looked like we were getting phone calls from our biological family asking us to go with them. They have a place for us to stay, but I think we made up our mind that we was going to go with the church. We thought we was going to have church, but we didn't have church. And I had to just narrow it down to what I was going to do, which was checking all the vehicles, making sure they're running properly. and. If not, what do we need to do to get them running properly, making sure they got a full tank of gas. We had a briefing on when we were leaving. Pastor was giving out our instructions for how we would be leaving out and staff would have to be last to leave because we were helping, preparing, shut things down. We never had a hurricane of this magnitude I know everybody I else was there. Yeah, we was there. Yeah. We were the last, re we mm. was the last yeah. crew to come in. Right, right, because I, I remember seeing Minister Carter directing us in. Uh-huh. Come on in this way, because we missed the turn. You know, I still had hope for the church. I thought God was going to still do a miracle. I had hope even though the gates, the, the, the levee bus, I still had a hope that uh, the shopping center and the church was gonna be all right. Well, we were all in that little break room and they were uh, they had it at televised and everybody was gathered around there. And a lot of our downtown, the night ward, they were showing where it was flooded and people drowned and people on the top of the roof. And to me, I couldn't bear to watch it. But I remember later that evening, we had church and Brother Janelle was singing, singing a song, This Is Not The Time, Nor The Place. And that was the time that we were able to just weep and grieve and cleanse from all of that because it was, I never thought about ever staying there, but I, my heart just broke for those children and those families that endured that and how they were showing and they were showing raw footage of mm. the the deaths old people with sheets over them they were deceased or some were floating in the water and it just was i don't believe i've ever cried as much as i cried that day it just was amazing who would have thought that we would get that kind of treatment and that's how you know it was god that we got that kind of treatment, we got the buses, and when we got there, we got off the buses, and they brought us to the front of the line. Now, all the people that was there, they needed to take care of us first, and they did. I, I didn't hear them complaining. No, they didn't. Uh, it, it, it just was loving the ride. All from school, it was like another Oh, vacation. Yeah. Vacation, another picnic, you know. Sometimes we would have our kids to go with Brother Everett, ride with his children a couple of miles and stuff like that. And, and see, and, and Brother Everett had a microwave in his van. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess and he had a lot of snacks over there, you know. You remember the PlayStation. He had the PlayStation. So it was like one big, like being <laughs> in a Winnebago or something, you know. I think that it kind of uh, shook him that we couldn't get in touch with my mom, their grandmother. And uh, Madeo was safe, uh, his mother was safe, but my mom was questionable because we couldn't get her on the phone. Even with the traveling and all, I, did, I never had a thought to say, I'm, this is enough, you know? Because everything was provided. One thing I can remember, we had to find a gas station. We had a, a huge caravan. And most people didn't have much to, because it's an emergency. I mean, you're living from paycheck to paycheck. It's hard to say, well, you got a thousand or two 
stash for this kind of emergency. I remember pastor standing at the front of the line at the gas pump, calling the men, loading the gas, you move out the way, the next one pull up. And he did that till the last call. I'll never forget how my pastor and Mr. Monet served. Smoky. <laughs> Weed smoke, <laughs> drinking. <laughs> Pimping. <laughs> but once again, once again, once again, Pastor still preached the word. Actually, Pastor was preaching. He had service in the Wayward. I call it the Wayward Hotel. The Wayward Hotel is some brothers got saved while mm -hmm. we were in there. It was brand new. We were the first ones in it. I God is every step of the way. He's always been there. We was excited too. I was just so grateful that we stopped driving and that we can kind of put some roots down and right. get reestablished. Mm -hmm. And Marble Falls mm -hmm. is just as warm and generous as Lumberton, if not more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful, grateful. I have to keep going back today. Even when it gets hard, I still, I don't, I'm not forced to go back there, but it's such a beautiful thing to look back and see God kept his promise. And if he did it then, he'll keep his promise. He had never a prom he's never he never breaks his promise. He never does. Never. Never.